Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, now I see we've just passed 26,000 subscribers. That's fabulous news. So thank you to all those who have subscribed already. Please do so if you're interested in this sort of content. Um, today, not going to look at Sudoku's. Going to go back to kind of what the what the video channel was once planning to be about, which is uh, cryptic puzzles. And uh, in this case, we're going to look at a puzzle from the early years of the Magpie, the magazine that Simon and I set up about 16 years ago. Um, this came to mind because about a month ago, Simon showed you the solution to um, a really brilliant um, themed cryptic called Middle of the Road by Trick, which involved doing some manipulation with the actual paper the puzzle was printed on and uh, this kind of thinking outside the box Simon remarked was something he'd actually done once as a setter and we've seen a lot of Simon as a solver but I don't think we've ever seen anything about Simon as a setter so I'm going to take you back 15 years to a puzzle that appeared in the Magpie um, we're up to volume 17 now but this would have been in what was volume 2 back in the days when the magazine was sent out by post only um, but you could still subscribe to the Magpie now if you look it up under piemag.com you'll find it but um, back in the early days this puzzle appeared it was called so in I think issue 18, so halfway through our second year. Pyman was Simon's name. The reason the uh, magpie is so called is because I was compiling as Mr. Magoo and Simon took his name from the nursery rhyme and became Pyman. Um, and he had this puzzle called Circling the Square by Pyman. The blank grid, as you can see, and... Um, a difficulty rating of E. We invented these difficulty ratings from A to E to give solvers some idea of what sort of puzzle they were tackling. Uh, we published very few E's, which was the hardest rating. Quite a few of those we did publish were by Simon. He always had the kind of expressed ideal that the best puzzle was one that only one person could solve, but importantly, that everybody else would recognise was fair when they saw the solution. I don't know never achieved that and uh, personally I'm quite glad but it was something he was always sort of aiming for. So in this puzzle it says some squares contain more than one letter and these squares give solvers the incomplete picture. Solvers must draw in the rest of the picture heeding the title where relevant. The focal point is at the very base of the relevant square and in Pyman's version things must be taken to the absolute limit. The correct solution will show only the completed picture and its name positioned in a titular and approximate manner. Solvers must highlight every letter. Now, I'm not going to take you through the solutions to all the individual clues. Um, it's worth adding that part of the reason for the E grade is that Simon always liked to make his clues as difficult as possible, and the tradition in these kind of themed cryptics is that uh, you can go to any definition in Chambers Dictionary and use those. So let's just look at one down, for instance, Cinders and Daniel lifted comb. Um, now, what you'd need to know to solve that is that red, one of the meanings of red as a verb instead of the colour, can mean to comb, and that the word dander can mean the cinders or embers in a fire. So the answer to that clue is dander, with Daniel being represented by Dan, and then comb being red being lifted. I mean, and they're all like that, frankly. It's pretty tough. Now, what you had to do to put this grid together was kind of fit these together. And one of the reasons it was so difficult was that you would find, as you fitted them together, they didn't all work in the grid exactly. And I'll show you why that was. So dander was that one down that we just solved. And there isn't quite enough space to fit that in with the across answers. In fact, one across I think was hangings and this next one across in the third row was hall. So what you could learn from that was that you had H, A, N and D in this square that I've marked in green 
and also HA and ND in that square that I've marked as green. The same would be true here, Oberland and Hatchies, Ploughland and Hatchies there. So you've got hand, hand, hand and hand up here. Now down here, you've got foot, foot, I think that's bandicoot and certified, great words, hare's foot and tartufo and aot, samfu and outface, it's some ridiculous words there. But foot, 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 foot across the bottom, hand, 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 hand across the top. And this, very importantly, you've got A level down and carnalities across, which gives us either vulna or more likely navel. Now, I don't know if you're immediately thinking of the right thing from that, but what that was meant to make you think of was the famous um, picture by Leonardo da Vinci of the Vitruvian man, who certain features, two pairs of hands, two pairs of feet, and a navel. Let's ignore the other features for now. So, We've got the Vitruvian Man, and the name of this picture is the Vitruvian Man. So where are we going to find the letters of Vitruvian Man to highlight for the solution? Well, let's go back to that preamble, which said, Solvus must draw in the rest of the picture, heeding the title where relevant. So that's circling the square, the title, which, by the way, is a reference to a very famous listener puzzle called Squaring the Circle, which was extraordinarily difficult and no doubt Simon's inspiration. The focal point, now that must be the navel, is at the very base of the relevant square. And in Pyman's version, things must be taken to the absolute limit. The correct solution will show only the completed picture and its name positioned in a titular and approximate manner. Solvers must highlight every letter. Well, what can that mean? So here, if you draw the circle that is like the circle that surrounds the Vitruvian man, it goes outside the grid. So we truly are thinking outside the box already. But the only squares in the grid that it does go through, if you draw it in this particular way, they've got some of the letters of Vitruvian Man, but not all of them. So if you were to start here, you've got V-I-T-R-U-V, -V, which is quite promising, Gatruve. And then as the circle goes round, it comes back here and you've got N-M-A-N. So you've got all the letters except for I and A. And like a lot of solvers, when I tested this, I'm kind of searching at the top of the grid. Like the, the solution does have the circle just cutting through the top corners of the grid, as you can see. It needs to cut through the square when you circle this square. But we don't have the letters I and A in that corner of the grid. So where are we going to find them? Well... What you have to do to understand that is go back to the original grid, which had this title on the top. And now suddenly, if you actually bother to draw the circle, and a lot of solvers only found out what was going on when they did draw the circle, you find that the title is so carefully positioned that the I from circling and the A from Pyman are in the exact places needed to make up the missing letters of the Vitruvian man. And I mean, for, mo for me, this was one of the most entertaining solves I've ever seen. So you had to highlight not only the letters of Vitruvian man down in the bottom of the grid, but also the I and A out of the printed title. Now I've never before, or probably since, seen a puzzle where you had to highlight a letter or two in the title. Maybe there's been one other. But that's what I really mean by thinking outside the box. And it was a very clever puzzle. Um, I mean, one of those that anybody who actually solved it is basically not going to forget. Now, I was planning to tell you about this a few weeks ago. And then suddenly something slightly strange happened in that the listener, the regular crossword that was the inspiration for the Magpie and the Times, published this puzzle three weeks ago. Number 4553, inscription by Dysar. Now, when I saw this, this strange extra square at the top and a sort of blob in the middle, 
I did sort of vaguely think, <laughs> it's almost like it could be the Vitruvian Man again, but I expect that wouldn't be done again. Um, and then the preamble mentions uh, bars mustn't be entered. In 20 clues, the word play omits a letter of the answer. Read row by row, the omitted letters spell the name of an artist's work. Oh, well, art again. Solvers must sketch an outline of the work, guided by three words that appear twice or more in the grid, in cells, touching at edges or corners, in nights, moves, or even spaced laterally. The drawing must include a feature with a few basic details in the large cell. Um, and initial letters of down clues in normal order give a further instruction that solvers must follow. Well, again, I'm not going to sport with you by trying to go through the clues of this, but I will show you how the solution worked. When you solve the puzzle, this was the grid you got <coughs> with um, a message, importantly, from the down clues, as it revealed, that said, ooh, what did it say, something like, center um, the circle at the navel. And the dot, and I've tried to show it in this square with an A in it, was there. But I mean, very clearly, this was going to be the Vitruvian Man again, just as I'd suspected from the start. And when you draw the same sort of circle here, um, you can probably see that some places in the grid we've got... Um, oops. Sorry, that wasn't what I meant to do. We've got... Sorry, coming down from here, we've got L-E-G, L-E-G, leg. We've got L-E-G, L-E, and then a slightly adjusted at an angle G. So we've got two legs there. Where are the arms? A-R-M, A-R-M, and the same on the other side. Um, and here we've also got torso running down twice there to kind of help you shade, sh show the Vitruvian Man in exactly the right spot. And I think the published solution, here we are, showed um, the arms and legs, obviously, in those positions with all the letters highlighted that you were meant to pick up. Oh, there were, sorry, there were two more bits of leg in the knight's moves coming down here circle drawn exactly the same and uh, this time the letters omitted from the wordplay spelt the title in Italian Luomo Vitruviano unlike Simon's where it was a Vitruvian man but otherwise it was very reminiscent of that puzzle from 15 years ago and I imagine anybody who solved both would have noticed the similarities dramatically now this solution's only just been published so I've had to wait till it came out to show you this but I think not only have we seen a couple of examples of the really fabulous things people can do with cryptic puzzles, but also some rather brilliant thinking outside the box. And, you know, the one takeaway that I'd urge you to remember from this is uh, that sometimes you just need to go right outside to find what you need. And that was the case in Circling the Square by Pyman, a lovely puzzle. So... Thanks very much for watching. Just thought you'd be interested in a bit of Simon's history there um, and a bit of history of the magpie as well. So I um, hope that was of some interest to you and I uh, hope to see you again probably for a more normal video soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.